Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is how do you know which method to check the refrigerant charge with? Should you use superheat method or should you use the subcooling method? So when you walk up to an outdoor unit, uh, you're not going to be able to tell by the outdoor unit rating plate. You're going to have to find the indoor unit rating plate. So whether that's an evaporator coil or whether that's a air handler with an evaporator coil in it. So you wanted to go ahead and take a look at that rating plate, but as well, you want to verify what that rating plate says. So say it says it has a TXV or it has a piston in it. You do want to take that door off and just verify what you have inside. So when you look inside, you could see a piston metering device. You could see capillary tubes as a metering device, or you could see a thermostatic expansion valve. If you have a fixed orifice, so that's pistons or capillary tubes, and you check the refrigerant charge in the total superheat method, and that's done at the outdoor unit. If you have a thermostatic expansion valve, TEV or TXV, then you check the refrigerant charge via the subcooling method. Subcooling is done on the small liquid line and total superheat is done on the large vapor line. And they are both done at the outdoor unit. If we had a thermostatic expansion valve at the indoor coil, then you can rely on the outdoor unit rating plate. So if the outdoor unit rating plate said TXV subcooling 12 degrees, then that is the subcooling that you're gonna be shooting for. You want to note which refrigerant it is, in this case it's R410A, and you would disregard the piston size on that rating plate. That's just there because uh, when the outdoor unit's manufactured, they don't know if you're going to use a piston or you're going to use a TXV. So they're telling you what the piston size should be for the correct sized matched evaporator coil, and they're also telling you what the TXV subcooling should be if you have a thermostatic expansion valve mounted at the evaporator coil. Now I will say that I've seen uh, outdoor unit rating plates that say TXV subcooling 8 degrees. I've seen them even read TXV subcooling 19 degrees. So that's the target subcooling that the manufacturer is looking for you to have. Uh, basically, if you don't have any target subcooling on the rating plate, or if you took that shroud off of the outdoor unit, you know, if you turn the power off, then you take that shroud off. If there's no subcooling rating on that shroud at all, on the inside or the outside, then what you're gonna end up doing is you're gonna use roughly right around eight to 12 degrees of target subcooling as long as the unit is a single speed or two speed unit in second speed. So it's in its highest cooling mode. These charging methods wouldn't necessarily be uh, the exact charging methods that you'd use for something that say has micro channel coils in the outdoor unit or if it's a uh, variable refrigerant flow unit. So you wanna always make sure that you're following the manufacturer's charging instructions in order to check the refrigerant charge of the unit that you're working on. So since most outdoor units that have a single speed or two speed uh, compressor, they typically are calling for eight to 12 degrees of subcooling. If the rating plate's not there, then I typically use a target subcooling of 11 degrees. Now, if you had a piston as a metering device at the evaporator coil or a capillary tube or capillary tubes, then you're gonna use the superheat method. And the superheat method is going to be different than the subcooling method because you're going to have to check it uh, continually as the unit is running. So you need an outdoor dry bulb temperature reading, and we typically take that down low away from the outdoor coil in an area where the outdoor unit is not blowing heat on it and it's not directly in the sun. Then we're also going to need an indoor wet bulb temperature reading, and that's typically taking in the return air duct a few feet upstream of the evaporator coil. So, so just before the evaporator coil, if you have, say, one filter return air grill and it's not a very long run uh, to the coil, then you could take it right in front of there. But the most accurate measurement is taken actually in the return air duct itself. Once you have both the outdoor dry bulb temperature and the indoor wet bulb temperature, you're gonna have to use either a superheat chart or a superheat app on your phone. So as you see, as we line up 64 on the upper part of, the, of this charging chart, and then you have 85 degree outdoor temperature, you see that we have a 11 degree target superheat. We would measure that as a total superheat at the outdoor unit. So total superheat is the actual vapor line temperature minus the vapor line sat temp. If you're looking for step-by-step -step videos on how to check superheat and subcooling basically live with the refrigerant gauges, I have those linked down in the description below. And if you want to help support this HVACR training channel, check out patreon.com slash acservicetech. And if you're looking for the tools and supplies I use in the videos, I have them all linked down in the description below. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech channel.